Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Elmo Lopez, Jr., CEO of Gateway Community Health Center. And on behalf of our board of directors, clinicians, and employees, I would like to welcome you to the Gateway Community Health Center for this very important press conference. And before I continue, I'd like to introduce first our board members, Mr. Laura Garcia, our board chair, Clara Luz Velasco, Mr. Jerry Sanchez, and Ms. Oralia Garcia are here in attendance with us. Also, our senior managers, if you can please stand, Ms. Laura McCoy, Mr. Oscar Buitron, and all our department directors and uh, managers, if you all can please stand. Thank you for being here, thank you. We are here today to announce that last Friday, February the 9th, after months of hard work and advocacy, community health centers such as Gateway Clinic secured a great funding victory when Congress passed legislation to fund community health centers nationwide. The over $7 billion in funding, including $600 million in new additional dollars, will support community health center operations and address the unmet health care needs of over 27 million patients most in need in our communities across the nation. Gateway Community Health Center operates four primary care clinics, two in Laredo, Texas, one clinic in Zapata, Texas, and one in Heavenville, Texas. We have over 30,000 registered patients who visited our clinics over 90,000 times last year. This important federal funding that was approved by Congress on Friday amounts to over $5.9 million per year, or about $11.8 million for two years for Gateway and all of our clinics. This money supports our mission to provide primary medical care, dental care, and behavioral health care to those most in need. We have over 15,000 registered patients who have no insurance and who are financially disadvantaged. We take care of those patients on a daily basis. But this funding battle could not have been won without the help, support, and advocacy of one important legislator, and that is our very own congressman from the 28th District, the Honorable Henry Cuellar. Congressman Cuellar has always supported community health centers in his district, and there are five, including Gateway Community Health Center, Atascosa Health Center, Centro Med in San Antonio, Nuestra Clinica del Valle in McAllen, and South Texas Rural Health Services. Those clinics combined in Congressman Cuellar's district served over 143,000 patients last year and had over 600,000 clinical visits. Congressman Cuellar, we thank you for all of your support. We thank you for your vote. We thank you for your outstanding leadership. Please help me welcome our Congressman, the Honorable Henry Cuellar. And uh, just for the record, two former band members were up here. <laughs> uh, Elmo, again, I wanna, I've known Elmo since uh, we were in high school, uh, and actually, uh, I think we met in, in band. Uh, so we've known each other for a long time. I certainly appreciate uh, Elmo, you, uh, the board, uh, the board uh, of directors, uh, and of course the staff, uh, whether you're a doctor, you're a nurse, or somebody that provides an essential service here, I want to say thank you so much. Because if you look at the history of um, uh, Gateway Community Clinic, it started off as a migrant program uh, some years ago, and of course now it's expanded uh, to something else. Uh, this is a federal program, as I, when we were going through the uh, healthcare debate, I was telling one of my good friends, a doctor used to be here, and he was there 
you know, we don't like that government program. I, I used to whisper to him, this is a government program where you're working at, and Obamacare will be a, a government program also. Uh, so it's, this is a very important program, uh, and as Elmo said, I got different uh, clinics throughout my district from San Antonio uh, to the Atascosa, Wilson, uh, McMullen area, uh, of course here in Webb County, uh, and then all the way down to uh, the valley where I represent. So this is a, a very important uh, program to me, something that I certainly uh, support and uh, will continue supporting. Uh, we extended this for two years, and I wish we would have done it for longer, but uh, under the circumstances, a two year instead of a one month or two weeks uh, period is a lot better, and hopefully uh, later we can expand it for a longer time so we don't have to stop, go, stop, go. Traditionally, this would have been a very easy vote, a very easy vote. But as you know, um, politics came into play, and as you know, there's the issue of DACA and the Dreamers, which I support. And the way it was presented to us was either you vote for the Dreamers and shut down all the government, um, uh, or the other way around. Uh, I sit on the appropriation, so I deal with the money uh, year after year. Uh, and now that we got this budget deal, we're gonna finish our work that we started last year. This budget should have been finished back uh, September 30th and October 1st. You should have had a budget instead of going through this process right now. Uh, but it was put in a very difficult situation and as you know, uh, we voted around six o'clock in the morning on Friday. I hadn't done one of those for a while. Uh, we used to do that years ago. I hadn't done, uh, I think we started at 3.30 and went all the way to the vote around six o'clock in the morning, five o'clock our time. I'm still on Texas time, even though I'm in DC. Um, but it was important because Elmo that was there uh, last week, um, uh, Elmo understands as he visited not only my office, the other office, this is very, very important. If we shut down the government, uh, then basically we shut down you know, almost $4.1 uh, tr uh, trillion dollars of funding. Um, and you have a disruption of services. And again, I, I support the Dreamers, uh, and when I met with them, I said, look, I'm gonna do everything I can, but I will not shut down the federal government. I always say the terrorists don't shut down the government, but Congress has to wait sh shutting this down. Uh, you know the history, uh, 2013, the Republicans shut down the government for 16 days over health care. I thought they were wrong. Uh, with all due respect to my Democratic colleagues, uh, this time for those three days over Dreamers, I think it was wrong also, no matter how passionate we feel. Because next year, you never know, it might be animal rights, or it might be a Confederate flag, or it might be another issue that we feel very strongly about, and we're gonna close down the government. So we're gonna close down the government every time we feel passionate about uh, an issue about uh, uh, on those issues. So what happened, there were 63 Republicans that voted no, uh, because they, um, uh, didn't like, they liked the part that there was extra money for the military, but they didn't like the part that there was money, extra money for non-defense, which included this. Very interesting time. It's okay, uh, put extra money over here, but don't put money over here. If it would have been defense, I think all of the Republicans would have voted yes. Uh, then there were 73 of us uh, that voted yes against our party, uh, simply because we felt, again, that it was the right thing to do uh, to keep the government open. So we kept the government open uh, to March 22nd. This will give us time to work on the appropriations from last year. And since it was a two-year deal, uh, the budget from last year and then what we call FY19, the next one should go a little easier, uh, regardless if Trump wants a wall or doesn't want this, but it should be a lot easier because we got the top numbers now. So we made a decision, and then we are gonna finish uh, the, um, uh, the appropriations, bef hopefully before uh, the March 22nd, 23rd uh, deadline, the 23rd, and then from there, we can go ahead and finish. The reason we're here is because, again, there is extra money uh, that will be coming to the community health centers uh, for FY 2018, which is the current one that we should have done, the one we're in right now we should have done last year, there'll be $3.8 billion. 
And then for FY 2019, there will be $4 billion. Uh, it's a two-year uh, program. Laredo Gateway gets $5.9 million a year, which is, again, important for the operation process. And again, I don't need to go over all the services. I'm sure Laura, somebody's going to go over that. It's, it's an amazing services, the amazing services that, that you all provide here. So on top of that, we also made some changes to the program itself. Uh, supplemental grant uh, funds will be established for health centers to implement evidence-based models for increasing access to high-quality primary care services. Uh, I would ask you to look at those changes that we make because I want to make sure that we take advantage of that. Uh, the grant terms for operating health centers will be reduced now from one year to two years because of the environment that we have up there in D.C. Operating grants uh, can also be used to establish new delivery sites for health centers and to expand their existing services. So I would ask you to continue looking at expanding to the other areas around Webb County, uh, outside of Webb County that we can provide like you're doing right now. So I would ask you to do this, uh, which is again very important. As I said, your mission used to be focused on migrant uh, workers and their families, but then it, it got expanded more as a um, healthcare safety net for the community, again, turning no one. In fact, your mission to provide quality care for everyone uh, is being upheld by all the team members, the medical providers and staff alike. I know that you all have taken uh, now a new role with the veterans, and now whether it's Tammy U, LCC, you're expanding, which is good because this is one program that has been very, 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 very uh, helpful uh, to our community. So from migrants and their families, now you're expanding this, whether it's veterans or students or other places, um, it's important. Years ago, as you know, we voted on a health care, and I know there were some doctors within your, at least one that I know of, here, and people were conflicted, and, and some of the doctors that I know uh, in the community that are amazing, because they've always been for the poor, they were against this um, health care. But I think now, as the years have gone by, we have over 11 million uh, people that signed up for health care. Uh, I think it's shown that it's, it's a good program, and it's one that we need to fine tune, not repeal like our Republican friends want to do, or not change a single word like some Democrats wanted to do, but we need to look at the good things, keep the good things, a lot of them are good things, and then, of course, make modifications on that. Our, uh, our uh, uninsured area has gone down to 28% in Laredo. Still very, very high, but because of the health care bill that we passed back on 2009, uh, we now have seen that number of uninsured people have have gone down. So again, I certainly want to congratulate you uh, for the work that you've done to make sure that we address uh, the uninsured population and, and the ones that don't have insurance. Uh, as you mentioned, that there's now more people working class that have insurance, but there's still a lot of people that don't have insurance, and this is a role that you come in. Tied into this, I have to mention CHIP because, as you know, CHIP uh, we started the CHIP program at the Farias Elementary School back when I was a state legislator. It was the first pilot program in the state of Texas. A couple of weeks ago, we announced that the CHIP program under the other budget deal, the temporary one, we uh, expanded the CHIP program, authorized, reauthorized it to six years. Now, under this new deal that we did, we actually extended it, so I need a magic marker to change the six, to 10 years. So now the CHIP program is, it went from running out, out of money, expanded it six years a couple of weeks ago, and then on Friday we expanded it from six years to 10 years. So for the next 10 years, the state of Texas, uh, Webb County, Laredo, and other places across the nation will continue getting um, uh, resources so we can have the resources uh, to make sure that uh, we have uh, that funding. So the, the two big announcements are the ones that I mentioned, your funding, uh, CHIP, but I want to mention a couple other programs that I think apply to you all also, uh, besides the ones I mentioned. The National Health Service Corporation, which supports primary care providers in underserved communities, uh, would receive uh, millions of dollars, and as you know, the Gateway Community Center is a certified National Health Surf, uh, uh, Service Corp site. So again, funding, reauthorized, take advantage uh, of that area. 
the Teaching Health Center graduate medical education again uh, for primary care residents program for outpatient clinics. Again, it's reauthorized and millions of new dollars is, is put in. And again, why is that important? Because we want to uh, make sure we get doctors back in, in our areas. Special diabetes programs, again, uh, receives more money. Uh, the family to family health uh, information centers, again, that provide assistance to family with children that have special health care needs, again, gets more money also. Uh, and again, uh, other programs that deal uh, with uh, 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 behavior also or funding also dealing with health also. So again, it was a good budget deal, um, but again, we still got to now put the details in the appropriations. And I was talking to my staff this morning, I said, okay, this is for the rush now, because now we got money and now we got to fill in the spots that we left open uh, last year. So again, I want to say thank you so much, uh, Elmo, to you and your board uh, for the work that you've done. Uh, and again, I do appreciate it uh, when Elmo and other folks uh, go up there at DC. It does make a difference because we're familiar with the program, but we want to make sure that other members or senators or their staff are familiar uh, with this program because this is a program that we should support. This is a program that should be a no-brainer in supporting. And this is a program that when you go down uh, to your area, whether it's Laredo, or Atasco, San Santo, wherever, you see real results because all I had to do was just, uh, I couldn't find a parking space a while ago because you have so many people that are coming in that are needing uh, the, the spaces. So I, almost, I think I took your uh, uh, place. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I do have to say thank you so much, and I want to continue being uh, one of the team players with you to make sure we continue getting funding. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you, Congressman Guerrero. Very kind words, and thank you for your support with us your interaction, we could not have passed this very important bill. Thank you. I would now like to call on our chairman of our board, Mr. Laura Garcia, to say a few words. Mr. Garcia. Good morning, dear friends and colleagues. In my, in my decades of fighting and working with community health centers, <clears throat> Excuse me. I have found it rare to have such an ally as Congressman Henry Cuellar. He truly understands our work and our mission. On behalf of, of the patients, farm workers nationwide, board and Gateway Community Health Center, we thank you for not for your most recent vote for years of your support and your fellow legislators have allowed us to continue helping those in need and caring for them with the highest quality of care. Thank you again, and to let you, us move forward knowing that you are fighting for us. Thank you very much, Congressman Quayer. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Before we close, I would like to read a letter from our uh, executive director of the Texas Association of Community Health Centers, Mr. Jose Camacho. First and foremost, I'd like to thank all of our health centers for an impressive and effective show of unity. To make our voices heard in Washington, I'd like to thank Congressman Cuellar as well as his support in ensuring that community health centers secure the funding we needed for continued operations. Believe me, your voices were heard. Your advocacy efforts at a local level had tremendous impact. Because of your continued advocacy and support, we were able to not only fix our funding issues, but increase our federal funding as well. When the U.S. Senate and House passed the continuing resolution to keep the government open, and fund health centers until the end of fiscal 2019, a great burden was lifted. The bill adds $600 million over the next two years. In addition, the health center program, the uh, National Health Service Corps, and the Teaching Health Center program also received two years of additional funding, securing vital resources to support the health center workforce, 
and enable Texas health centers to continue caring for their communities. We now are able to move forward and serve our more than 1.3 million patients Texas-wide and expand our services and most of all, improve the health of our communities. That's what we do best. And we look forward to continuing our service to Texas communities. Sincerely, Jose E. Camacho, Esquire, Executive Director and General Counsel of the Texas Association of Community Health Centers. I would also like to thank our friends in the media for being here and carrying this important message to our community. We're here to stay. We're here to help all people who walk through our doors and provi provide quality health care to everyone. Thank you very much for being here.